It hasn't exactly been a peachy week for Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who appeared on a public access call-in show in her district a few nights ago and got an earful. Thank God for Joe Biden. She is an embarrassment to the state of Georgia. Well, we all have our opinions. Amen to that, and I've got mine. Uh, all righty, thank you. All righty, thank you. Green, who helped lead the right-wing charge to overturn the 2020 election results, learned that people back in her home state have been paying close attention to her ridiculous antics. Another listener during that call-in show took Green to the woodshed over her refusal to work with President Biden. Now, this piece of sound is a little long, but it is so worth it. We accepted Trump for four years. You all refused to accept Biden. You refused to do it. And we, you know, we, maybe we didn't like Trump, but he won, and so that was it. You all, you all are not, you will not accept the fact that Joe Biden won. And that is the whole thing. You're not going to accept it. You're going to keep on and keep on and just pick, pick, pick. Yeah, and you won't get anything done if you're not going to respect the man and realize that he's the president you're not ever going to get anything done you've got to work together and you are not doing it you're not doing it and neither the other republicans they're they're just going with trump no he didn't win it he didn't win it and wasted that all the money in georgia have to count the votes three times because he said he won and he didn't to me, it would everything in Washington would be would settle down if every if the Republicans would just say, oh, "We didn't win." It's like Alabama and Florida, the Alabama people. Well, we didn't. We really should have won. Bless her heart. The look on the Congresswoman's face as she listened to all of that. It's a little early for Valentine's Day, but I think I'm in love with that nice lady on the phone, in part because it's a sign our democracy stands a chance after all, and because it's a reminder that when you peddle the worst kinds of conspiracy theories, sometimes reality bites you back. Green has become a rising star in the GOP, even after embracing other big lies and conspiracies, like blaming Jewish-owned space lasers for the California wildfires and comparing congressional COVID restrictions to the Holocaust. This woman is mentally ill. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. We should point out Green later apologized, but Green is not alone on the January 6th Karma Watch. North Carolina GOP House member Madison Cawthorn is now facing a challenge from some of his constituents who filed a lawsuit arguing that he should be barred from Congress for speaking at the Stop the Steal rally just before the attack on the Capitol. Those North Carolina citizens note uh, the section in the Constitution stating that no person shall sh serve in Congress if they've engaged in an insurrection. The Democrats, with all the fraud they have done in this election, the Republicans hiding and not fighting. They are trying to silence your voice. Cawthorn, who recently was caught on camera cleaning his gun during a virtual congressional hearing, has repeatedly talked up the prospect of civil war in this country for months. If our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's, it's going to lead to one place, and it's bloodshed. And I will tell you, as much as I'm willing to defend our liberty at all costs, there's nothing that I would dread doing more than having to pick up arms against a fellow American. A Cawthorn is blowing off the notion that he could be disqualified from Congress. This is just another impeachment of President Donald Trump. It's just that he's not in office right now, so they're not capable of actually being able to do it. So instead, they're going after his fighters. They're going after the America First Patriots. There is nothing patriotic about hinting at civil war. That's the opposite of patriotism. But it's not just Green and Cawthorn who are facing January 6th blowback these days. Consider the mounting legal problems for the former president and other Trump allies. They're piling up quickly. But that nice lady from Georgia who is calling on Green to work with President Biden has put her finger on something important. 
members of Congress are sent to Washington to get things done for their constituents. You may have noticed that scary bridge collapse in Pittsburgh today, the same day the president was touting his administration's infrastructure plan. The president was able to bring a small number of Republicans on board for his proposals to fix the nation's crumbling roads and bridges. The vast majority of GOP lawmakers, though, voted against it. But there is another category of Republican when it comes to infrastructure, the kind who takes credit for all of that money coming back to the states, despite their opposition to the bill. Iowa GOP Congresswoman Ashley Hinson tweeted how she secured hundreds of billions of dollars for a project in her state, even though she opposed the infrastructure bill. Democracy may be in peril, but hypocrisy isn't. Perhaps some Republicans are just confused, given what's coming out of the state TV network for the party these days. Back in June of 2021, he started talking about his bipartisan infrastructure deal. There's nothing bipartisan about it. If it, if it was bipartisan, it would have been passed by now. Wow. And that wasn't even Tucker. Just to be clear, the Biden infrastructure bill once again was bipartisan. And once again, it did pass. Maybe that Fox anchor was thinking about all of those infrastructure weeks during the Trump administration that never resulted in anything. Here's an idea. Maybe for once, just once, give bipartisanship a chance. Give democracy a chance. I guess for some on the far right, democracy is a bridge too far. The good news, and why don't we end the week on some good news, is that maybe we are starting to see the light at the other end of the January 6th tunnel. Citizens are finding a way to send a message to the freaks on the fringe, roaming the halls of Congress. You may be ride or die with Trump, but you might also be on a highway to hell.